Hi everyone, so a topic that's really been interesting me recently is how to think in the game of chess. Now what do I mean by this when I say that? Often I get to a position in a board, whether it's online or over the board, where if it gets very complex, I'm just sitting there for 10-20 minutes at a time, just staring at the board, not really sure what to do. And by having this mental checklist in my head, I'll hopefully be able to break down these positions and come up with more counterfeit moves easily. And I found that uh, by implementing this new tactical idea that I have, I've been feeling a lot more confident in my own games, and also winning them a lot more, because it's a lot more easier to come up with the good ideas. So what is this checklist so the, for me this checklist is four steps it, for you it could be more feel free to add or take away from this uh, but this is just my uh, rough ideas so the first idea here is just can i win now this might sound a bit crude but ultimately the game of chess is about tactics and the first thing you need to be looking at is checks and captures these are perhaps the most obvious moves of the position so the board that i have position that i have in front of you uh, the move that we should be calculating right away is bishop takes h7 and really there's not much else to calculate in this position because black isn't really doing much they're very passive uh, whereas us ourselves we have all our uh, pieces developed and we're ready to go now i'm not going to go through the tactics here but i will just show the quick line uh, just for anyone interested it's just uh, we can take the pawn the king would have to go back and then we bring the rook over and black only has two ways to play this uh, but both are losing we'll actually know that white is winning as both defenses fail uh, bishop back fails to bishop g5 and pawn uh, forward even fails to rook takes and this is a really crazy line and goes quite in depth but that's not the point of the video today it's just more to show that um, the first thought in any position is can we win it on the spot and it might be something obvious like just our opponent has blundered a piece or it might be like a check or it might be a mating net like the one we have here now, the second part of our checklist is sort of to do the inverse of that, is can our opponent win on the next move? And if we have a look at the position below, I'll just give you a few seconds. We can see that yes, white is actually threatening quite a lot. White is threatening to take our pawn, and in turn they're actually going to be scoring our queen to our king, winning the queen. So every move, or this move at least, we're going to be having to think right now, can we defend against this? Is there a way to escape from this deadly attack? Because it actually does look quite scary, because not only are we losing our queen in this position potentially, white is the one with a lot more space and a lot more control. And uh, the solution to this position is actually to play f4, which is to disconnect the queen from the rook. And then once the queen takes, we're then going to uh, push to the pawn again. And again, I'm not going to get into too much detail of this position, but we could see something like this occurring on the board quite easily. And we're actually see at the end of this, black is the one that actually has the attack, which is quite crazy to think. Um, but again, this is why we need to be sharp on our tactics and we need to be calculating lines through. Because ultimately, if we're going to lose the move on the next... Uh, uh, if we're going to lose the game, sorry, in the next move, or win the game on the next move, really that's the thing that's going to be at the forefront of our mind. Now, these first two examples have been a bit obvious about what to do, as they very much are tactics and these are the first things to calculate. Whereas the next position I have here on the board, I think takes a bit more of... Uh, you might want to spend a bit more time thinking about this, because it's not immediately obvious. We can go through our checklist again. So, number one is white... We're playing white here. So, is white winning the game on the next move? Well, I can't really see any tactics on the board. Uh, moves like this is something far-fetched, as there's no way we can follow up. And really, there is no way we can win. And similarly, black. Uh, black doesn't really have any tactics. There's no way we can check or win a piece immediately. So therefore, we now need to come on to our third point of the checklist, which I think is perhaps the most important part of this checklist and mentality overall, is we're not going to be thinking about our plans first. We're actually going to be thinking about where our opponent wants to play. So perhaps uh, give yourself some time in this position and think what does black want to play in this position by coming up with uh, what black wants to play. Yeah, it's actually much easier to play as white. And this sort of thinking is called prophylactic thinking or preventative thinking. And it really does uh, make the game a lot nicer uh, for white to play. So the most obvious move I think here in the position is that white will just want to develop their pieces like so and just castle. And there's nothing wrong with this, white is still better, they have more space. But there's actually a much more accurate way of playing. And the move to play here, and this looks crazy if you have only seen this for the first time, and if you haven't thought about what black wants to play, the best move in this position is actually to play g3 which is such a weird move to play. We haven't developed either of our bishops. We still haven't castled. Why is playing g3 the best move? 
So if we go back to the main position, let's just think about it for a second. So all of Black's pawns are on dark squares, so his dark square bishop is very bad. All of our pawns are on white squares, so our dark square bishop is actually the best piece in our position, this one down here, as they're going to have free reign over the position very soon, and they're going to be very strong. So Black's main plan in this position is to trade off the dark square bishop. And how are they going to go about doing that? Well, they're going to play uh, bishop e7, and they're going to play bishop g5. So if we go around with our normal plan of just playing bishop e2, looking to castle, bishop e7 comes, and then we castle, and bishop g5. And now, white is still better, they definitely still have the more space, but it's not as commanding as we could see before, and black is actually having plans, they've got a way to play the game, the knight's going to come here, they're going to castle, at least and they might even play f4 at some point, f5 even, and they've got something going on. Whereas if we uh, look at g3, the most accurate way to play, which we come up using our prophylactic thinking, if black goes for the same idea here with bishop e5, e7, we can now play h4, and notice we've stopped bishop g5, and we're not able. To, black is not able to trade off their worst piece, and we're able to keep our best one. And this might seem really odd, uh, but if you use the computer and use some of your own analysis to go into this position a bit further, we can compare this position, which is plus four for white despite material being equal, uh, to the other position where yes, white was better, but it was only about plus one uh, once the bishops were traded. And I think by this is a really eye-opening position, I think, uh, because yes, we're coming up with our own ideas, but by looking at our opponents first, uh, we're making the game just much harder for them to play. And I feel that black is more likely to make a mistake uh, in this position than they were in the position before. And on a human level, this is going to be much more easy to win for white than allowing black easy development and an easy way to play the game. Now, hopefully, uh, and of course, I did say four steps. So the fourth step in our sort of uh, understanding is then to look at our own ideas. So, for example, if we got to this position and there wasn't such a clear way for black to develop, so this bishop e7, bishop g5 idea wasn't here, then yes, we would start thinking about our own plans of bishop e2, bishop e3 and castle and just coming up with uh, ideas to get developed and just play normal standard chess. So hopefully, now you've sort of come across uh, this checklist, uh, I'm going to give you a final position. And using the stuff that we've sort of discussed and looked at, perhaps come and think of the best idea here for black. You might want to pause this video for a bit because this is quite a complex position. But hopefully by using that checklist, you'll be able to come up with the right idea here. So uh, step number one, can we win the game? Well, we're going to be quickly looking at the tactical ideas and any captures and checks that we have here. So the first one that we probably should look at is just queen takes. Then king takes back, and you might think, well, I've got bishop a6 check, but then the king moves over, and yes, this is a playable position, uh, but I haven't won the game. So I'm not really going to be analysing this position any further. I will think about it when I come up with my candidate moves, but this isn't super exciting to me. Uh, the next one to look at is, can white win the game immediately? So if it was white to move again, what is white uh, planning to do? Can they Do they have a checkmate? And the only check they have is here. Uh, they are threatening to win a pawn, actually. So they could take this knight here, opening up the bishop to take this pawn. So this is an idea that we have to sort of play against. And yes, winning a pawn isn't winning immediately, but this is definitely some tactics that are working in the favour of white. Now, the third step, and I perhaps think, the, again, the most important one, is what the sort of positional plans of this um, board, or this position, <laughs> I'm repeating myself, and how can we stop white from going about them? So white hasn't castled yet, and white very much would like to castle. In fact, white's next move probably would be castle. And how can we stop this? Well, the most obvious one, as we saw before, was just to take. But then we're taking queens off the board, and it's becoming a bit more drawish because there aren't as many tactics. Another idea here is to actually play queen a7. And this idea, I think, is really nice because we're freeing up the square for our bishop, which in turn would stop the enemy to, uh, from casting, because if you castle here, you just lose the exchange. And not only are we doing that, but we're also addressing the other threat in the position that white has. So if white tries to win this pawn, as they do like this, then we actually have a very nice attack already, because we can bring the bishop out, we can check the king, and we've given up a pawn, uh, but we've already got a very nice position here for 
uh, black, black, white has to go back to defend against this, and we can bring our knight in. Our queen's going to be coming in, and this already is minus three for black, so definitely uh, to be preferred. And we can see that by denying white castle and denying their plan, uh, black, white's king is now stuck in the center, this bishop is stuck behind these pawns and this knight forever, this rook is stuck in the corner, this rook is stuck in the corner, whereas black's position is very harmonious and a lot more easy to play. So yeah, hopefully uh, this sort of checklist will help you in your games and come up with some ideas and uh, so you're not stuck at the board as you may be. And I know I am myself uh, guilty of uh, for 10, 20 minutes, not really knowing what to play or coming up with any ideas. But yeah, anyway, thanks for watching. Cheers. <laughs>